Hello everyone, welcome to my YouTube channel. For those who are new here, my name is Katarina. In today's video, I will be showing you how to paint a very simple sunflower, just the flower, not the stems or the leaves. If you are a beginner and have never painted a sunflower before, this is definitely for you. I'm not going to be doing anything complicated or too detailed because I have no idea how to do that. I'm a beginner myself and I just wanted to paint a sunflower. I will be painting a background with multiple flowers and at the end I will be making it into a card. Of course you do not have to make a card, you can create whatever you want. This is actually part one of two and in the next part I will be showing you another project where I also paint a sunflower that you can try. Therefore if you are not subscribed to my channel make sure you hit that subscribe button not to miss that video. So let's jump into today's project and I will start with the products that I will be using. The list of the products you can find in the description below or over on my blog. For this project, I will be using gouache. If you don't have gouache, that's no problem. You can just use normal watercolors. The reason why I decided to use gouache is because, first of all, it's going to be more important for the painting of the sunflower in the part two, but also because I never used them before. I bought them a few months ago and I was waiting for a right project to finally try them out. If you are not familiar with gouache, gouache is a water-soluble medium. It is similar to watercolors, but it's more opaque and when it dries, it dries matte. And because I was using very cheap paints, it also was more chalky. Something like when you are using very cheap watercolors. But I don't mind. Since gouache is a water-soluble medium, I will be using a watercolor cardstock that I cut into an A6 panel. And because I will be making a card, I also have a card base that I pre-cut and pre-scored. I also have here a few brushes. The sizes are 7, 4 and 1. I found that the smaller brushes work for me better, but it all depends on how big your sunflowers are going to be. Next, I have here two jars with water and a paper towel to soak up excess water. And lastly, I have here a compass because I will be drawing a circle for the middle of the flower. I could have tried drawing it freehand, but doing it on camera, that would be a disaster. If you don't have a compass, you could, for example, use a lid from a bottle. So let's start painting. First of all, keep in mind, this is not a quick project. I painted five full flowers and some around the edges, and it took me about an hour and a half. This also means I will have to speed up the painting part by quite a lot. As you can see here, I have a tin with a gouache. I squeezed the paint from the tubes into the pans. I saw some artists doing this and I had an empty tin, but I would not recommend this. Although you can reactivate it, it's not the same as with watercolors. I started by drawing the circle. The circle was about 2 cm in diameter. Of course, it depends how big your sunflower is going to be. If you think of a sunflower, the petals are usually smaller compared to the diameter of the brown middle part. To paint the middle part, I used the darkest brown. And except adding few additional layers of the brown color, I didn't do anything else to it. Of course you can add the details, but then it would not be a simple flower anymore. After the first layer of the brown was dry, I applied the second layer, but you can do this after you painted the petals. Also, because I'm going to make this into a card and I will be stamping a sentiment directly on top of the panel, before painting additional flowers, I had to keep in mind to leave enough space for that sentiment. Now let's paint the petals. In order to see where I'm going to be placing all the flowers, I painted the first flower fully. This way I knew where to paint the other flowers. And then I was able to paint more flowers at once, but I did not paint more than two. And because I did not use too much water, it was dry pretty quickly, but I did use my heat gun time to time. If you don't have a heat gun, you can just use a hairdryer. Also, I'm doing here the wet on dry technique, where only the brush is wet while the paper stays dry. Plus, I was adding as little water to the paints as possible. I wanted the colors to be super vibrant and I did not want the water causing havoc on my paper. I was painting in layers. That's actually why it took me so long. First of all, I painted two layers of the paint. I just wanted to bring a little bit of dimension to the flower so it's not too flat. Also, I painted two rows of the petals, one row that is on top and one row that is behind, because if you think of a sunflower, they have quite a lot of petals. But if you like the look after one layer of either the color or just one row of the petals, then you can stop there. The colors I'm going to be using are bright yellow, dark yellow, and this orange brown. 
but you can also use dark brown, orange, or red. And I played with the color combinations as I was painting. As I'm painting here, you can see different ways and combinations of me using the color, but in the end, what worked for me, for the top row of the petals, for the first layer of the color, I used the bright yellow diluted with water so it's much lighter. And then for the second layer of the color, I used the bright yellow with less water. For the petals behind, I used the same bright yellow as I used on the second layer of the top petals, so bright yellow with less water. And then for the second layer of the color, I mixed the bright yellow with the dark yellow. So there is a little bit of contrast between them, I guess that's how you call it. And when I was applying the second layer of color on both rows, I used my smallest brush and I added few smaller strokes of the orange brown. I just added it at the bottom of the petal and I used another brush with the main color of the petal to move it up and blend it in. Which created this, I don't know how to call it, but it added a few little details to the petal without too much work. One more thing I wanted to talk about is the size and the shape of the petals. The petals of sunflowers are pretty big, since sunflowers are big flowers, right? But the petals compared to the middle part of the flower, they are smaller than the diameter of the middle part. And that's what I was trying to do here, although it didn't work for each petal. The thing is, there are other flowers that are similar to sunflowers, and the main difference is the smaller petals compared to the huge middle part. When I was practicing on sunflowers, I painted the petals too long and it looked more like a daisy or gerbera, especially gerbera. And the shape of the petals is like a teardrop without the rounded bottom or like a pointy hat, but the top doesn't need to be too pointy. If you have troubles getting the shape of the petal, what helped me is to paint a middle line and then I paint it in the curved shapes. I hope this makes sense. I will have the whole explanation written on my blog. But remember one thing, nature is not perfect. And if your petals are not perfect, then you are painting it correctly. Anyways, I will now play a little bit of music and speed up the video even more. And I will be back once I'm done painting.
The painting is done. I think it looks quite pretty. As I mentioned earlier, you can make it even more simpler by adding less layers of the color or less petals. As I said, I will be making this into a card and the first step is to add a sentiment. I will be using a stamp for that, but if you don't have any stamps, you can write the sentiment yourself or use a printer or just leave it as it is without any sentiment and have it as a neutral card. If you don't have enough space for the sentiment, what you can do is to create a label. You can use a piece of black cardstock or paint a piece of cardstock black and with a white gel pen, write your sentiment. And if you have stamps, you can heat emboss using white embossing powder and then adhere the label on top of the panel. But I had enough space so I can stamp directly on top of the panel. For the sentiment, I'm using a cute stamp that says make a wish. The stamp set is from Clear Besotted. To stamp the sentiment, I'm using the VersaFine ink in Onyx Black and I'm using a stamping platform, which allows me to stamp on the same spot multiple times if the stamping is not perfect. But if you don't have a stamping platform, you can use an acrylic block. I also decided to add a little bit of splatter. I'm using the same colors I used on the flowers. I added a little bit more water to it. I dipped my brush into the paint and I tapped my finger on the brush, splattering the paint onto the paper. The bigger the brush, the bigger the splatter. But you don't have to do this, this is completely optional. And lastly, I adhered the panel on top of a card base using a double-sided tape. The card base I made myself from a craft cardstock. If you don't make your own card bases, you can also buy them. They often sell them in packs with envelopes. So this is the card for today. I hope you guys enjoyed it and I hope you will try this yourself. It's super simple. I first time painted it the day before I made this video and I really like the result. If you will paint it yourself, make sure you tag me on Instagram or use the hashtag NordicP. Before you go, I would really appreciate if you gave this video a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel, which will help my channel to grow. And don't forget to come back for the part two of this video where I will be making another card with a sunflower. And if you would like to see even more inspiration, you can check out the whole playlist with other cards like these. Thank you all so much for watching and I will see you in my next video.